There's nothing more important to a first-person shooter than the shooting. The way the weapons feel and how they perform is key to the way an FPS plays and how you can best play it. Today we're going to talk about submachine guns, one of the six weapon classes in Titanfall 2. Before we get started, anytime I reference damage numbers, I'm referring to a spreadsheet created by a fellow Titanfall player named Matt H. As far as I can tell from playing the game and testing the weapons, his information is correct. Now let's get started. Sleek and specialized, Titanfall 2's submachine guns allow pilots to make use of their unrivaled mobility without any drawbacks. With tight hipfire spreads when stationary, on the move, and while jumping 30 feet off the ground, SMGs are the weapon of choice for a pilot that doesn't want to stand still. There are currently four submachine guns to choose from, and today we're going to talk about all of them. First up, the car. Not the kind you drive, the submachine gun. One of the most balanced and easy to handle guns in the game, this SMG, much like the R201 carbine, will serve you well in a wide variety of ranges. It doesn't have the same damage performance at range as its carbine counterpart, and it doesn't have any special characteristics when compared to the other guns in its class, but it makes up for its lack of flair with its ease of use. I'll put it to you this way, if you're someone who drives practical cars, then you'll most likely be someone that fancies the car SMG. There's truly nothing special about this gun. The one thing it has going for it is that it doesn't do anything crazy or special. Some people might find that boring, but there's something good to be said about being focused and in control. When you shoot this gun, you'll always know exactly where your rounds are going, no questions asked. I suppose this gun is like the Toyota Camry of Titanfall 2, or that perfect girl at work whose blouse is never too tight and whose skirt is never too short. Here's the final verdict about the car. It removes all of the negative variables from combat. It doesn't shake, it doesn't fliggle floggle, it's precise, accurate, and it always does what it needs to do. The only thing you have to worry about when you're using the car SMG is matchmaking and we all know what a nightmare that can be sometimes. Personally, I'm not a big fan of always being predictable. I like my cars wild and my girls out of control a little bit. The alternator is more my style. This gun feels like it was forged on the battlefield with scraps of metal, twigs, and the essence of Chuck Norris. It's a cannon that you can fit in one hand. Comparable to the Flatline V47 in its damage performance with a shorter effective range, this thing will decimate anyone foolish enough to stand in your way. That is, if you can keep it under control. Just like the flatline, the alternator features an aggressive side-to-side -side recoil pattern and it's rough. Handling this gun takes a serious amount of work and if you're not up for it, you'd best look elsewhere. Couple this gun's poor handling with a small magazine capacity and you might be thinking, this thing isn't worth the time or the effort. But you'd be dead wrong. Once you come to terms with its negatives, you'll find that they're manageable. You'll never forget about them, and they'll cause you to lose a close fight from time to time. But the power, the raw, unrestricted power is too much to let go. All in all, the Alternator is a very powerful gun with some very obvious drawbacks. There are going to be moments when you know in your heart of hearts that your reticle was on target, but this piece of shit decided to shake to the left, and it's going to cause you to get killed. And then there are going to be other moments when you just can't seem to get that guy locked on, but it's going to shake to the right, and your bullets are going to go exactly where they needed to go.
The R97 is arguably the worst submachine gun in the game. It has the lowest per bullet damage, the most uncontrollable recoil, which means its performance against anything farther than sneezing distance away is lacking, and a fire rate so aggressive you'll run out of bullets before you can sufficiently track your targets. But why then is this gun so much fun? Let's find out. Do not adjust your volume. This is what it feels like to play with the R97. This thing is loud, it's aggressive, and when you squeeze the trigger, everyone is going to turn and tell you to turn that shit down. This is why the R97 has a place in a pilot's arsenal. On paper, it doesn't perform nearly as well as the other SMGs, but there's no denying the effects this thing has on the person using it. This gun exists because we all like to indulge ourselves in silly creations from time to time. It's like the Jersey Shore. We all watched it at one point because it's fucking dumb and we need dumb things in our lives. Now, I just said a lot of bad things about this gun, but the truth is you're not crazy if this is your go-to weapon. Its high rate of fire does make it difficult to control at longer ranges, but that also makes it absolutely deadly at close range. Boasting an impressive fire rate of 1,080 rounds per minute, 18 rounds per second, this gun can kill targets faster than any other gun in its class. Last but certainly not least is the Vault. This weapon makes me very sad because I know it's the best in its category. It's got pinpoint accuracy, controllable recoil when aimed down sights, and a negligible recoil when fired from the hip. Damage and range performance that seems uncomfortably good, but there's a serious problem with this gun. It doesn't have a soul. Unlike the other three SMGs, the Vault's only claim to fame is that it's possibly too strong for its own good, or perhaps the good of the players that go up against it. Other than that, it doesn't have any unique characteristics. The Vault is essentially a mashup of the other three SMGs, and in becoming a mixture of all three, it's become something with much to be desired in the personality department. It does everything well, but wielding this weapon doesn't feel like wielding anything at all. When you pick up the car, you know you're sacrificing power for precision and balance. When you take the alternator, you're handling a domineering beast that dares to be controlled. Finally, when you grasp the R97, you're letting go of your inhibitions, throwing caution to the wind, and letting your success be determined by how much fun you can have in 10 minutes. But the vault, in trying to become the pinnacle of close and mid-range combat, feels like it's lost the very things that make those ranges truly enjoyable. definitely see an increase in your kill-death ratio when you handle this gun, but for me, every time I pull the trigger on the vault, I miss the control of the car, the kick of the alternator, and the thrill of the R97. Whoa, who's cutting onions, man? That got a little heavy at the end. Seriously though, this has been an overview of the SMGs. As always, the name of the game is Titanfall 2. The name of the channel is iBlueAirJGR Gaming for Comedy. Thank you for watching. And also, thank you for the incredible support. If you're new to the channel, thank you for subscribing. If you've been with us for a long time, then thank you for sticking around. And I'll see you next time.